Good morning, everyone, again. This is our last block of sessions of this year's um, edition, yeah. So um, I am Tanara, I will be the chair of the language modeling block four, which is the one we're starting right now. And our first presenter is Marek Blauch. He will be talking on behalf of uh, his colleagues on the development of evidence-based grammar for terminology extraction in one-click terms. You have 20 minutes, Marek. Thank you, Danara. Hello, everyone. Uh, so my name is Marek Blahush. I have been working for Sketch Engine for the last six years, and I want to present a new project that uh, we have been working on in lexical computing. Uh, if you start working for Sketch Engine, there are several things you need to unlearn, you need to forget what they taught you at the university. I'm a computer scientist, so it's not important that your algorithms are 100% correct. You don't need to verify them. You need to take the corpus approach and be happy if the top of your results are correct and the rest is usually just noise or too time demanding to take care of. Also, you need to, and you're happy to stick to uh, linguistic evidence rather than complex linguistic theories or even your own linguistic judgment. You just follow the corpus. Uh, you often find yourself working with languages you don't speak or even you may have never heard of. So uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm a polyglot, but I speak a dozen of languages, but still that means I know just some 10% of all the languages supported in Sketch Engine. So it's more or less the same situation for me as for my colleagues. So we often take help from native speakers. Terminology extraction has been a feature in Sketch Engine since 2013. Uh, it basically means finding multi-word keywords in a domain-specific corpus. Currently, 29 languages are supported. And uh, since 2017, this functionality has been surfaced through a single-purpose user-friendly interface called one-click terms. Uh, we decided to do this in order to make the feature more available to translators or terminologists, people who don't need to understand, who don't want to understand the all, all what's going on in the background, corpus creation, term extraction. They just upload their text or texts in two languages, also bilingual extraction is possible. Alignment can happen automatically if the texts are not aligned, and they get their list of terms in one of the supported languages. So it's actually just one click you need to do to get the list of the terms. So there is a dedicated website for this functionality. You see the list of the supported languages. And in 2021, uh, I was asked to help improve uh, the performance and also uh, the number of languages supported. Uh, the languages with the star next to them have already been improved to a new version. And actually, when I got this task, I thought of all the things that I had to unlearn, that I had to adapt, as I showed on the slide, and I decided to take a new approach. So all of these updated grammars have been actually uh, built using a new paradigm that I'm going to describe in this presentation, and then I described in more detail in my paper. Uh, how terminology extraction occurs in Sketch Engine? Terms are extracted using uh, corpus-based contrastive technology. It basically means you have your own focus corpus that you want to explore. You want to know what it is about, what the typical terms are, what the terms are and you need to have a large reference corpus in the same language so that you can know which words are typical for your text rather than general language. Then there is this generic term extraction algorithm that has been there since the very beginning. Uh, it's rather easy, but very powerful. Uh, you compare the relative frequency of the term in the focus corpus and in the reference corpus, and then give each term candidate some score. 
I say term candidate because not all engrams are terms. Well, usually terms are noun phrases, but not just any combination of a noun with some other words is a term. It should be a full lexical structure and uh, we need language specific term grammars. So for each language, there has to be a set of rules what a term can look like uh, in that language and how it should be output as well. I will show in more detail. So this, these term grammars consist of rules and each rule has two parts. First, there is a labeled query in the CQL language uh, which matches candidates by describing them token after token. So this example that I have here, uh, it's looking for an adjective, a noun, or possibly a gerund in front, followed by uh, another noun. So this is one typical, very frequent structure of a term, and it matches, ter matches term candidates. It matches words, words, word groups such as black cat, or assistance dogs, or flying elephants. So you see it's also matching the words in some, some, with some inflection, but in order to output this, you want to unify it uh, to some canonical form, citation form, basically a lemma for the term. And that's why we have a directive just in front of the rule, which says how to output this. So this should be output uh, with the second word lemmatized, so you get black cat assistance dog and flying elephant. You can do more uh, tweaking of the words using any information you have in the corpus for each of the tokens. And when writing these rules to make orientation easier and maintenance as well, uh, we make use of macros. The term grammars are not just, well, they are plain text files, but they make use of the M4 macro language. You can have aliases for, for tags or for uh, full tokens. So for instance, uh, uh, this, instead of this, you just write noun and somewhere at the top of the file, you declare that noun always means this particular tag. This is also useful when, when the tag set changes, when you adapt one grammar for another language. You just change the definitions and that's how you start. And you don't need to know all the details of the text set when reading the term grammar. And there, we, there are also commands. So it's useful to explain when something, when you are trying some tricks to have better coverage that the reader might not understand. And I also put an example of a term matched by the rule for each, each rule so it's easier to imagine what it actually does. Rules uh, can either be written just using your own introspection or using some more advanced approach. And one such approach is what I have developed and I'm presenting here today as I have called it evidence-based term grammars because all the pre-existing term grammars before 2021 were apparently written by somebody who just sat down at a computer and thought, okay, a term can be a noun, adjective noun, noun preposition noun, or a few more, and that's how they wrote it. And there was no checking this uh, data across actual term bases or corpora. Well, the result was good enough but it was definitely not complete. It didn't uh, capture all patterns that can appear in terms, but it was good enough for the time. But I said to myself, if I'm to describe the structure of terms in languages, I don't know, remember? So <laughs> how shall I do this? Uh, and I decided to use the corpus way of doing it. That means I don't want to describe what terms look like. I just uh, I don't want to prescribe it, sorry. I just describe what, what they look like in existing term bases. So I looked for terminology databases, which have already terms uh, used by terminologists and researched them. Uh, the easiest and the best resource so far to use to download and process that I have found is IATE, the European Union Terminology, 
database. Uh, it is available for all the official EU languages. For other languages, it's more difficult to find large collections of terms that we can use. I have experienced with, I have experimented with Wikipedia titles and maybe some other sources. But so far, what I am presenting here is based on seven European Union languages from IAT. Uh, the goal here is to maximize the coverage of an existing term base. And we believe that by re achieving this, we also uh, will learn enough about the structure of terms in the language that it will also work for all other terms that can be found in texts in that language. Well, during the development of new term grammars, new evidence-based term grammars, uh, we need to do several steps. And the first one is when you have the data that you want to learn on, you want to train your term grammar, write, write it, model it along. So you need to clean the data. There's a lot of HTML markup, quotation marks, brackets, and they often put uh, in, 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 in IATE data, uh, they put ellipses and they put uh, something in brackets. So it's not actually just one term, often it's several terms with each other. You know, when you need to either uh, extract the individual terms or just, just remove it from, it's often easier. There's a, there are hundreds of thousands of, of terms usually. So I try to get rid of those which are not actual terms and also of a chemi complex chemical formulas, which are a completely different thing and it's not possible really to match them, even the tokenization would be wrong in the first place. So I concentrated myself on common terms in terms of structure. Then uh, when I have a clean list of terms, I create a single purpose term corpus. And that's a special type of corpus, which is not actually a corpus, it's just a collection of the terms that I have extracted from the database uh, expressed as sentences. They are not actual sentences, but like for it's, it's not a difference for a sketch engine. I make a corpus and these terms are tagged for part of speech, lemmatization and orthomorphological annotation. And at that moment, I can generate a frequency distribution using sketch engine API on two levels. The first level is part of speech. So that means that for instance, for English, the second most frequent structure of a term in the explore data was adjective followed by a noun. It makes up 18% of the whole database of the whole term corpus. And then the second level shows a more detailed frequency distribution on the morphological tags. So the most frequent obviously is uh, adjective and noun in singular, but the second most frequent type has the noun in plural. And we could have more, we could have gender variation, we could have variation for cases, depending on the language. There are always some example terms to help you understand uh, what types of terms are hidden in this particular, uh, under this particular combination of tags. So I use this report in this, when discussing my work with a native speaker. This is usually enough together with my explanation of the text set to write rules. In writing term grammar rules, I need to make some compromises and some generalizations so that I don't end up with a very long and difficult to read term grammar. That would also mean it would take more time than to compute the terms anytime somebody wants to extract them. I have set up some threshold for inclusion. So I don't, as I told, I don't look at the bottom of the results. So 0.15% for me is just a rule of thumb and I don't go below, below that. So I only take something which, which appears, uh, the patterns that appear at least in those 99 something percents among the top, which is almost everything, but still not everything you will see at the end, the coverage of the term grammars. I also use the native speaker's introspection because some things cannot be seen in the report. Uh, for instance, when there is an agreement between the adjective and the noun in case, number, gender, uh, then this is not always obvious. Uh, so I, or I would need to write all the combinations one after another. So if I learn or if I know that this is a rule in the language, 
uh, that I just write a global condition, which I show an example here, uh, which says that genders of the two tokens have to agree and the numbers have to agree. This is an example of Spanish terms. This rule would match reducción de ojos rojos, so reductions of red eyes, and the red eyes have to be in agreement. So in the rule, I say a noun followed by a preposition, and then if there is a noun and an adjective, then the adjective has to be in agreement with the noun. I use the labels for the tokens here. And then this is output as with the first word, first token lemmatized, because that's the head of the term. So if we had two mentions in the corpus with in the singular and the plural, they will be output together. So uh, some, there are some difficulties when designing the term grammars. Uh, the input is not always perfect. Uh, sometimes we get incorrect tagging, so if it's frequent, we need to cope with it. If it's not, we ignore it. Uh, sometimes the rules cross noun phrase boundaries. Conjunctions are particularly difficult because they often join two sentences and not just two parts of a term, and they cannot be easily told apart in these cases. I don't want to have incomplete terms either on the output, so in the Italian term, Centro Robert is not a term. Centro Robert Schumann is a term. So I need to sometimes uh, limit the context to say that it cannot be followed by another proper noun. I don't output that proper noun, but I need to check for it that it's not there actually, or the end of the sentence has to be there. Another source of troubles is plural only terms. You don't want to see foreign affair, it's just foreign affairs. And United States of America, that's how when, what happens when you lemmatize. Uh, there is an expected improvement in Sketch Engine that would look for the actual usage of these terms. And if it finds out that most hits in corpora are in the plural, it would also show the term in the plural. But that's not yet been done. Sometimes I even had to do corpus research to find some data, like uh, what happens when there are two nouns next to each other. This is very frequent, but very difficult to to, to cope with also because of polluting pollution from English in other languages, that the order of the of the head and, and the dependent noun is often differ, different the other way. Then what you would you, what would you would expect in the language? And sometimes I also needed to uh, modify the whole processing pipeline to have some extra information I, I needed, like for the gender agreement. This is a comparison for Italian, for a corpus of Italian vegetarian recipes. Uh, and on the left, you see terms generated by the old term grammar. On the right, it's the new term grammar. So what's red is, is I, I'm happy that those are wrong terms, which were removed, and the green ones have been added. And you also see the differences in ranking. There is still something wrong there, but this was a development phase, but we have improved it. So we use these comparisons to improve the term grammar and change details of the rules to make the result as good as possible. So we have done this for seven languages. I had speakers help me with it. And we also improved the corpora and the pipelines in the process. The old term grammars were covering up to the half of IATE terms, and now we are at, at approximately three thirds. So we have improved the coverage of, of terms, and we have also enlarged the number of rules in the term in the term grammars. Uh, the languages processed have been English, Estonian, French, German, Italian, Portuguese, and Spanish so far. But we are looking for more. This is the number of rules in the term grammars. Uh, we always try to keep the number a two-digit number because I think longer would already be too long and too difficult to navigate in. And uh, the number of of supported terms, uh, supported tokens in a term also varies. When you finalize the term grammar, uh, you can make use of macros or combine similar rules to make it more compact. We test it with different domains and corpus sizes, get feedback from the user, and when we think it's ready, 
it's installed in Sketch Engine, made available to the public. And the term grammars that have been written using this evidence-based principle uh, have been licensed under a Creative Commons attribution non-commercial license. So they can be modified by users when, when necessary. Well, in the future, we would like to add more languages. We are working on Ukrainian and Arabic at the moment, but these are not EU languages. And we also would like to experiment with learning on running text rather than isolated terms, because it's probably not a surprise that when you tag a term as if it was a sentence, it's not always correctly tagged. So it's better to try to find a term in a corpus and learn from that. Thank you for your attention. Perfect timing. Thank you so much, Murek. Um, do we have questions from the audience? We have five minutes for discussion. Great. In a minute. Thank you for a very interesting talk. So the updating of the of the rules is basically to increase recall, right? But there is always a, a trade-off with, uh, with precision if you go to actual text, because some of the uh, rules will be very prone to overgenerating. Um, did you do? Are you planning to look at that, or are you have you already looked at that? Thank you. Yeah, you are right. Obviously, uh, what I what covers me and what, what makes it much easier for me is this generic term extraction algorithm. So even if my rules match something that maybe does not have the structure of a term, then the algorithm doesn't bring it up because it's not typical for the text. Uh, so I cooperate with somebody who already uh, solves this issue many times for me. Uh, the precision has been a problem sometimes, but then I explore each rule in, during the design, and if some rule produces a lot of noise, I prefer to cut it or to simplify to make it more strict and to sacrifice possibly some correct output. That's right. Yeah, precision is important, but I have not really numbered it. Since Latvian is not still supported from this term extraction, uh, I'm wondering, you shown in the very beginning formula uh, for terms, uh, some examples of, of possible term structure and how it can be extracted. Uh, could it be possible actually to use such formulas ourselves to, to, to extract terms? What would it be your comment? Yes, yes, definitely. You can do it right already now. Uh, you can create your own term grammar. There is some description on Sketch Engine website how to do this. You can see the existing term grammars and learn from them. And you can write your own rules. But the only problem is that you would need to have your own reference corpus because you cannot recompile our large corpora with your own term grammar. But it's possible if you have enough storage space to have a reference corpus and then the focus corpus, both using your term grammar. Anyone else? Any other question? I think we have time for one more question. Thanks. Um, a lot of the rules you have shown are seem to target noun phrases, right? And wouldn't it make sense then to include um, in your processing pipeline something that identifies noun phrases, like a phrase structure parser or a dependency parser even, then, then, the, then there could even be words between the, the adjective and the noun, for example, that should boost accuracy or not? <laughs> yeah, thank you. So first uh, thing is that I have uh, not included any verbal terms. There are some types of terms that are verbs, but I prefer not to include them. Then we have uh, obviously word sketches in Sketch Engine. So this is the type of queries that look behind other words in the middle. So if you are interested more like in behavior relationships between words, this is the function to go. Uh, the parsing in Sketch Engine is very shallow, so we don't do any syntactic parsing. I had it on one of the slides uh, that I don't see any syntactic structure, so I'm really based on just 
what words follows which word, and I sometimes allow some words in between, but I usually I, ju I just look for a compact uh, sequence of tokens. So yes, this would this would uh, require a lot of changes in, in in the pipelines, and this probably is something out of scope of this project. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we focus mainly on noun phrases because that's what translators expect. And I've asked several times whether they would like to see different lexical structures, even verbs or anything. And they, like, it's tradition in the translators community is that a term is a noun phrase, although we know it might also be other items. So it's driven by, by this, but we, are ab we would be able to extract different lexical structures as well if we were asked to do that. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. So thank you very much. Thank you again, Marek. You're welcome. Thank you, too.